Welcome back to Fuel Up Classic. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And a huge thank you to each and every one of you who've already liked, subscribed, and commented on my other classic car videos. Now, today's video is all about the legendary 124 Mercedes-Benz Estate. It's a car that I've been really keen to get behind the wheel of for a long, long time. Long before people bought SUVs, the big estate was the family wagon of choice. And I just can't understand why we don't buy these types of cars anymore. It makes a fantastic everyday modern classic. So come and join me as I take it out on some great roads and I'll talk you through this legendary estate car, why you should buy one, what you should look out for if you're thinking about buying one and crucially what to pay as well. No matter where you are in the world watching this video, you possibly have a different name for this car. Here in the UK, we call it the W124 Estate, but you might know it as the S124, the Combi, the T, the TE, the Wagon. All of them were the name given to this car, and all of the things I'm gonna talk about what you should look out for apply to this car, no matter where you are in the world and what you might call it. I really do think that the 1980s and 90s were peak times for these big wagons. They offered exceptional comfort, exceptional build quality, and they're just so practical. And there's a great reason that there's so many of these 124 estates left on the road. They were built with legendary build quality under Bruno Sacco, and if you don't know who he is, look him up because he's one of the most incredible car designers ever and he made some of the finest Mercedes, and of course the 124 was under his watch. So you wouldn't expect anything less than fantastic, and I know it's a term that gets thrown around a lot with this, but it's so true, bank vault-like build quality. You only have to look at this car from the outside and then open the door to just see how well put together everything is. And it's worth noting that this particular car is a 1996 example, so it's right at the end of 124 estate production, but it's done 182,000 miles, and there is not a single rattle, squeak, there's not a single broken button or piece of plastic. It's all held up to the test of time, family duties, dogs in the back. They're no issue for a car like this. And there's a reason that these cars are still to be seen across many, many parts of the world working very, very hard for a living. They were favored by taxi drivers in Germany and throughout Europe. And these cars really are capable of mega, mega mileage as long as they're properly looked after. So I think they make a great practical modern classic that you can still get for a relatively cheap sum and you certainly don't feel like you've been shortchanged in here. This car has pretty much everything. And then when you think about it, it's from the mid nineties, it's even more exceptional. It's like a baby S-Class in here. I've got electric memory seats, electric mirrors, electric sunroof, cruise control. There's an aftermarket CD player as well. That's probably the only thing in here that isn't factory standard and it's just a really lovely place to be. There's not even anywhere on the leather. That's how good the quality is in here. This particular car is an optional seven-seater one. So you've got two child seats that fold out in the rear load space area. It's incredibly practical. Mercedes never bettered the quality with, as with a 124. It, the cars that came after have just never lived up to the same sort of hype. They weren't built to the same sorts of standards, and that's why these cars, and especially as well, its predecessor, the 123 Estate, which is a car I owned for some time and loved, but this feels much more modern, much more livable than that. But these cars and the 123s are now really sought after. So with these videos, I really like to 
bring you guys along for the ride as well and experience what I'm feeling as I'm driving. And really, this car is exactly as you would expect. It's a big, capable, comfortable cruiser. The seats are probably one of the most comfortable that I've ever sat in. They're incredibly good. This big steering wheel, and I can see the three-pointed star on the bonnet. It feels commanding, and it just feels really lovely in here. I, you almost feel secluded from the outside world. There's very little road noise. The steering is, of course, vague. This isn't a sports car, but it does exactly what's asked of it. It's light. It doesn't take a, a really a great deal of effort at all. And this car just wafts along. And also, I mean, this particular car, I think, has got the sweet spot of engine and gearbox combination. Powered by the 24 valve, 2.8 litre, straight six petrol engine, mated to a four speed automatic gearbox. It's got enough grunt that if you need to put your foot down, well, naught to 60 comes up in about nine and a half seconds top speed about 135 miles an hour but really when you consider that this car weighs 1600 kilograms and it's a big car it's long it's wide the only thing really to suffer is fuel consumption you'll expect to get probably around 25 miles per gallon on a run and 20 miles per gallon if you're just pottering around town so it is a thirsty car but this car is now a modern classic. It's low road tax here in the UK. It's incredibly cheap to insure because you'll put it on a specialist classic policy and all the parts are available for it off the shelf. They're relatively inexpensive as long as you're not buying genuine Mercedes Benz parts of which they still hold a great deal of parts for these cars. So that really owning one of these bar fueling it up on a regular basis does not need to be a financially ruinous proposition. In fact, it's a great practical car that really this could replace any modern day car as your daily transport and still be that little bit special as well. And this car enjoyed about an 11 year production run they produced over 340,000 of these cars and there's still quite a few of them going and they make great everyday transport. They're bulletproof reliability as long as they're looked after. But there are some things to look out for and some things to consider if you're thinking about getting one of these. And one of the first things to think about is, yes, this car is built amazingly well and it can stand the test of time and huge mileages, but these cars have fallen to a point where they're not worth a huge amount of money and they do need to be maintained properly and that can sometimes be quite expensive to make sure that these cars are kept in tip-top condition and not all owners wanted to spend money on these when they were worth very little money and they worked them really really hard so if you're going to look at one of these just check the car over. Rust is by far the biggest killer of a 124 and the 123, its predecessor as well. Outside, those front wings love to rot. It probably, most cars out there now have had some form of replacement front wings. They really do corrode at quite an alarming rate, but pattern parts are available very easily and relatively cheaply, but you can usually tell that the quality isn't quite the same as Mercedes intended when they built these cars. So check the panel gaps on the front wings, check for the coloration. If the paint match doesn't quite add up, well, chances are it's had a replacement pair of wings in some time in the recent past. Check the sills, check all the way along the rear and front arches as well, because they can corrode out completely. And again, all panels are available, but you don't want to be restoring one of these cars. You want to buy a really good one that's been looked after, ideally within the same family from new, because these were very, very expensive. And the chances are, if someone bought this new and has kept it for all this time and is only just getting rid of it, well, they've probably loved it and spent an awful lot of money on it in that time.
make sure that the steering doesn't feel too vague and wallowy. It's not the most precise and direct car, but it shouldn't feel like there's loads of play. There shouldn't be clonking and banging as you go over bumps. That's a sure sign that the bushes and things are all starting to wear out and they're past their best. And that rear suspension setup is fairly complicated, especially if you have the self-leveling suspension option that many of these estates were fitted with. So you wanna be checking that the ride sits exactly as it should, check that it's not rock hard and bouncy as well, because then you could be looking at rebuilding the rear suspension and that's costly. And also, this was these later cars, as such as this, were built at a time where Mercedes were experimenting with more environmentally friendly wiring. And as time goes on, they have been known to degrade and cause a number of electronic issues. Now, you can replace the entire wiring loom. It's fairly costly in terms of the labor to do it. So bear that in mind. You just want to be checking under the engine bay. And if the wires feel brittle and they feel like they could break off in your hand, well, that's a sign that it hasn't been replaced and it's still on that original wiring loom. Other things to consider, well, these cars often were treated as family wagons or as even vans in some cases because they're such a capable load lugger. So make sure that the interior is not completely worn out. They should really stand up to the test of time very well in here but if the car's lived a very, very hard life, the interior might start to show signs of that age. And there's enough of these for sale out there that you can be really picky and you can buy the very best available. You don't need to buy the first one you see. And of course, little oil leaks and things like that can be fairly common as these cars get old, but it's nothing really too concerning to worry about. And another thing, if you tend to go for the four wheel drive transmission option, which was a very rare option, on the 124 estate called the 4Matic. Well, that not only makes this car even more usable and practical being four wheel drive, but one thing to consider is there's very limited parts and specialist support for that four wheel drive system. So you could potentially be buying a massive headache should it go wrong. And of course, we've got to talk about what to expect to pay for one of these. And really the last few years, people are starting to wake up that these cars are much more than just old workhorses and they deserve to be cherished and looked after. And as a result, prices have started to increase, but they're still not alarming, especially when you compare it to other cars, especially Mercedes of this era, how much values of those have gone up. The 124 is still somewhat behind that. And I think that's because it's still plentiful and it's still in a slightly awkward stage of not being considered a true classic yet, but I'm certain that it will do. Expect to pay £3,000 for a good, usable running example. They will be high mileage, so many of these cars are. So don't be put off by that. Buy on condition, buy on history, rather than overall mileage. And then that rises to about £5,000 for a really good six-cylinder model such as this. Uh, this car's been cherished throughout its life. It's had anything it's ever needed and it's not lived a hard life. And I'd expect to pay somewhere between four and a half and £5,000 for an example like this. And the very, very best examples, of which there are very few out there, probably expect to pay somewhere around eight to £10,000. Now, when you compare what else you could buy for that sort of money and what this car offers as an overall package, even at that top end, this is an incredible bargain. I would take one of these over the likes of modern SUVs such as Nissan Qashqai's, X-Trails, even the Toyota RAV4 and Freelanders and things like that that people seem to buy in abundance now. This is just a far, far better car, in my opinion at least. It's a great car and it's a relative bargain. And if you compare it to some of its rivals of the period, such as the Volvo 960 or the V90 as it became, that's a car that I owned for a few years and I absolutely loved. It was a great workhorse, fantastic build quality, six cylinder engine just like this, 
and on paper they're very very similar but the Mercedes just feels even more special this is a car that you could go anywhere with and no one's going to look down on you it's classless it was classless when it came out and still 25 years on it still is it's a great buy it's been a privilege to spend time behind the wheel and I'm so glad that it hasn't disappointed in any way whatsoever So the 124, whether you buy an estate, coupe, cabriolet or saloon, but for me, I'd always go for the estate. I love a big luxury estate and this car just ticks all the boxes and it really is one of the very best ever produced. It's a good, strong, reliable car that isn't going to break the bank to buy or to run. They're got fantastic support behind them and a lot of people know just how legendary these cars are so there's great forums there's online support if you decide to take the plunge to buy one i hope you've enjoyed the video there's plenty of other classic car videos on the channel so subscribe if you haven't already and there's plenty more videos to come as well and if you've got a story about a 124 whether it be an estate or any other variant that they had whether you've owned one, a family member had one, or perhaps a friend, let me know in the comments below. So I'm really keen to know just how far and wide the reputation of this car goes. And I'd love to hear your stories of your time behind the wheel or perhaps in the passenger seat of a 124.